welcome back to another review video. Today I am super excited about the book that I'm going to be reviewing because I truly believe it is such a unique book. Um, there are not many books out there, if any, that focus on witchcraft ethics. So as you probably know, the book that I'm reviewing today is The Modern Craft, Powerful Voices on Witchcraft Ethics. And it's an edited book. It's been edited by Claire Askew and Alice Tarbuck. As soon as I found out about this book, I knew that I had to read it and review it because not only is it such an important topic, it's also something that I find super interesting as well. So I was sent a copy of this book by the publisher, which was Watkins, and it's important to note that this is um, an advanced copy, so it's an uncorrected proof, which means that it might differ ever so slightly from the copy that is eventually published. I can't th imagine that it'd be much different in terms of the content that's inside the book, um, but having looked online, I do know that the cover has changed slightly in the finalised version, so the version that is eventually going to be published, and it is due to be published on the 14th of June. So without further ado, let's get on to the review. to talk a little bit about the editors of this book, so the two ladies that put it together. They have also contributed essays to the book, um, but as it is an edited book there are um, quite a few contributors to it, um, a lot of different writers in there, so I'm not going to talk about them all individually because we'll be here all day, but um, I will mention a few of them as we move on to talk about the book. But for now let's talk about the two um, editors of the book. Dr. Claire Eskew is from the UK and lives in Cumbria. She has a PhD in creative writing from the University of Edinburgh, where she is also their writer in residence. Claire has written four novels, All the Hidden Truths, What You Pay For, Cover Your Tracks and A Matter of Time. She also has two poetry collections, This Changes Things and How to Burn a Woman. Dr. Alice Tarbuck is based in Edinburgh. She is an academic specialising in witchcraft and environmental humanities. Her work has been featured in Nasty Woman and the Dangerous Women Project. Her debut book is called A Spell in the Wild, which has been on my reading list for a while. As I mentioned, this is an advanced copy of the book, so it's not final version. Therefore, I'm not sure if the blurb on the back of the book is going to change or not, but this is what it says on this version. An eclectic and radical collection of, of essays on contemporary witchcraft and the ethics of magic, a must read for anyone engaged with the occult, witchcraft or magics of any kind. And I was also sent um, a little information sheet um, about the book, um, this came with it when, when the publisher sent it to me, so it's just sort of like an information sheet or um, a promo sheet I suppose um, that gives you an overview to the book and the essays that are featured in the book so I'm just going to share with you a little bit uh, from this because it's got basically all of the information that you need to know about the book. It offers a fascinating snapshot of contemporary occult practice viewed through an intersectional lens. Touching on a number of timely conversations, essay topics include the ethics of decolonisation, meditations on what it means to honour Mother Earth during the Anthropocene, the reclamation of agency for working class and queer witches through spell work, a gender fluid perspective on breaking down hierarchies and magical symbolism, and a day in the life of a disabled pagan Irish practitioner. I did say that I would mention who has contributed to the book, so as well as the two editors Claire Askew and Alice Tarbuck, it also features essays and content from Lisa Marie Basile, Jane Claire Bradley, Madeline Bernhope, Lilith Dorsey, A.W. Earl, Henry Josephine Giles, Simone Copper, Iona Lee, Brianna Pagado, Megan Sudden, Sabrina Scott and M Still and if I have mispronounced any of those names all I can do is apologise. <laughs> Moving on to some of my thoughts about the book then, it does open with quite a powerful message ultimately asking how the old ways and the traditions of witchcraft fit in today's society and today's witchcraft community. There is a lot to break down, even in witchcraft and occult practices, to ensure that we are being inclusive and that we're not perpetuating harmful beliefs or practices. So the topics that are covered in the book are at the forefront of social movements and 
discourse generally at the moment so I think it's really really great to have this book that focuses on these important topics in relation to the craft. Witches are forever learning and adapting and it's important that people know where their traditions and their practices have come from, um, where the different elements of their craft um, have stemmed from. For example, when I first started out, I didn't fully understand smudging and I know that this is the same for a lot of people as well. I thought that the simple act of cleansing my space with a bundle of, of sage was the thing to do. Um, however, it wasn't until later that I realised that this is cultural appropriation and there is cultural appropriation attached to that. So smudging is a ritual and it is a lot more complex than I first realised and it's also one that I don't have any right to. Um, so as soon as I became aware of this, it was something that I stopped. It was something that was no longer part of my practice. It's important for us as witches and as humans to own our mistakes, to learn from them, but also to ensure that we have a full understanding of what we are doing uh, within our practice. Having said that then, the point of the book is not to make you feel bad or to chastise you about anything that you're currently doing in your practice but it's to help you to learn and to grow and to ensure that your craft is authentic to you. As I said uh, we're always learning um, and the point is to change and to better yourself. Be able to acknowledge when you've done something wrong or you may have caused harm um, probably not intentionally, um, but it's important to make those appropriate changes. The first essay of the book was Witches and Wordsmiths, Sorcerers and Storytellers, and I was ever so slightly disappointed with that one. So it gave a brief glance at women as witches and their persecution during the witch hunts and their oppression throughout history, but I feel like it offered nothing new to the topic. It was well written, but um, I felt like I was waiting for a point or some new ideas or sort of a what's next take. It was too brief to have any real depth to it. Um, and it was sort of repetition of ideas that I'd read countless of times before. However, when I moved on to the second essay, it definitely redeemed it. It was called Brass Knuckles, Broken Mirrors, Binders and Glitter Bombs. And it explored witchcraft on a very personal level from a queer working class witch. They explored witchcraft in poverty when access to books and tools and other witchcraft paraphernalia is just not possible. And it was really interesting because it showed how having to adjust and tailor your craft because of your personal circumstances means that it becomes something else, um, something totally personal and unique. By the third essay, I realised that this book was not at all what I expected it to be. And in most ways, that was a good thing. It's not going to spell out to you the ethics of witchcraft what's right and what's wrong. It's a lot more personal than that. Um, these are real people, people of colour, queer people, trans people, telling very personal stories um, and sharing their witchcraft practices that are not what we would consider the mainstream. Um, and it's about what witchcraft and the craft means to them. Now at this point I would usually give um, an example, so an example of someone's story to explain what I mean, but by the third essay by a trans woman, Harry Josephine Giles, I realised that it's not up to me to sum up or summarise these stories. I feel like I have no right to shorten or alter their words. We should read their words as they were written and how they were intended to be read. Um, and I shouldn't really be picking and choosing what I think is important from their story. I realise that the book allows us to explore our own ethics through these stories and personal experiences of others. And it's up to us as the reader to listen to these stories and to establish our own ethics. For me, having all of these different perspectives from marginalised voices that are different to mine allowed me to understand my privilege and I can appreciate other experiences that are not like mine. And that's something that I think is important for everyone. I won't talk about every single essay, but I did take something away from all of them and they are also different and diverse. I'm just going to mention a couple that sort of stood out to me. 
I did particularly enjoy um, Lisa Marie Basile's chapter about magic and mental health. It was probably the aspect or the area that I identified with the most on a personal level. It was during my own struggles with mental health um, that I got sort of deeper into my magic and into witchcraft. One of the most interesting chapters was titled Witchcraft, Indigenous Religion and the Ethics of Decolonization, a huge topic and this essay it only managed to skim the surface of it um, and looked at an aspect of decolonization. It focused on the use of the term shamanism and how early witchcraft books, when we're thinking about Cunningham and Gardner and Valiente, they referred to witchcraft and wicca as shamanism or a type of shamanism and took a lot of those early practices from um, shamanism. I remember when I was doing my early reading, particularly Scott Cunningham, that he did refer to shamanism and it did confuse me a little bit. For me, I never saw shamanism and witchcraft or wicca as the same thing. They were very separate things to me and unconsciously I chose to keep the elements of shamanism out of my practice because it just didn't feel right. I wasn't sure at the time why I'd done that but looking back I know that those practices just didn't belong to me. Saying that though some aspects of shamanism have already been blended with witchcraft practices, things that we may not even have realised. So for me it came down to decolonizing my own craft by learning and unlearning and I think that's why reading and research and listening to other voices is so important. As a whole I think that the most interesting essays for me centred around gender identity. Witchcraft is littered with masculine and feminine references in the tarot when we're working with deities and in astrology as just some examples. And I've always been of the mind that the energies were universal and that they applied to anyone and everyone no matter how they identified. However, it is a lot more complicated than that. We can't ignore the fact that the binary is there in witchcraft and it, we need to think about how we can acknowledge that and work with that but still make it more inclusive. So I am really interested in this developing area of the craft, especially from trans and non-binary perspectives and from that community. Okay, time for some final thoughts then. Like I said, unfortunately, I can't talk about every single essay because that would take ages. I just picked out some of the ones that I personally found interesting but I think the great thing about this book is that it is so diverse and it covers a range of topics that there will be something for everyone and something that everyone can learn from or relate to. It's one of those books that is useful for beginners but also for seasoned practitioners. Things such as cultural appropriation and the effect that your craft has on the environment should be fundamental considerations for all witches. I think it would have been nice to have some closing words or a little bit of a summary maybe from the editors at the end of the book. It's not necessary, I suppose it would have just been a nice way to finish it off and round it all up. I really did enjoy this book and I would definitely recommend it. Okay, that's it for today's review guys. Just a quick reminder that the book comes out on the 14th of June. If you do have any questions about the book or anything that I've said in today's review, then please don't hesitate to ask in the comments and I will do my best to answer those. Let me know if you're interested in this title and you plan on getting it. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you in the next video.